Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you the updated valuation of Alphabet after they reported fourth quarter and fiscal year 2021 results on the 1st of February, uh, a couple of weeks ago. The results were really good, as we can see here in the earnings release that they published. Here we have the quarterly results and you see revenue, 75 billion, 32% increase year over year, much larger than the previous uh, increase. And uh, on an annual basis, it increased 41% versus 13% last year. These are really, really good, good numbers. In operating income also, they had great results, 29% increase, similar to the last uh, quarter, and, uh, but it accelerated from the previous year. If we see that in a, a graphical form and we go further in time, 10 years, we see here the acceleration of the last uh, year in revenues. We can clearly see that here in the, in the graphical form. And also in EBITDA and operating income, we had the same pattern. Uh, operating margin as well, this dotted blue line, quite a, a large increase. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to project that increase uh, as in for the next 10 years, but it's, it's good to see that the business is really, really running in all cylinders. It was a great, great report uh, from, from all um, top line, bottom line and all businesses. Um, not only the ad business uh, and search and YouTube, but also uh, cloud business. Um, and the other businesses within within services, all of them are running running very well. If we see the revenue by segments for the last uh, few years, uh, this line is Google search and other, and there you can see also the big jump in uh, in, in revenue in this last year. And here we can see the other segments that they report: uh, Google Network, YouTube, other and Google Cloud. All of them were quite uh, strong, but let me show you uh, with a different scale <clears throat> and we can see how YouTube is accelerating from the past, Google Cloud as well accelerating, network, big acceleration and other. So everything has been accelerating in this uh, past past year. So it, it's been a great year in terms of revenue and in terms of operating income it's also been a, a great year. If we see here the, the operating income split in uh, services cloud and, and uh, other bets we can see uh, in, in this bottom part of the of the table the margin and uh, Google services the margin increased substantially in Google Cloud, the margin improved substantially. Other bets and uh, and the corporate um, are you know in the same range as, as before. So overall, what we saw here from 23 to 31 percent, the operating uh, margin, which great great numbers. They are also reporting that they have approved 20, uh, 24 one stock split. And even though stock splits don't add any intrinsic value to the business, it has some uh, implications. One of them is that uh, retail investors, especially when you have a, a, a stock that is trading at uh, above $2,000 like uh, with uh, Google, um, retail investors with uh, small accounts sometimes cannot purchase one share because that will be uh, more weight than what they want for the, for the portfolio. And um, so a lower price will open the possibility to those uh, retail investors to invest in, in, in Google. And we, let me show you one interesting thing here that uh, the Wall Street Journal published. And this is the top 10 most popular US listed stocks and ETFs by net purchases for the last two years from uh, 2020 in January up to January 2022. And here we can see the scale from zero to 10 billion and in net purchases. Uh, we see that 
this is the top spot that they have been purchasing uh, retail investors this is electric vehicle related companies like neo and tesla this one is microsoft look this microsoft has been quite popular um, advanced micro devices has also been quite popular apple has been really popular having the top spot in many different uh, months of the of the past two years so uh, as you can see here in this uh, graph you can see apple you can see microsoft advanced micro devices tesla neo all those companies uh, being popular uh, among uh, retail investors but you don't see amazon you don't see alphabet or, or google and um, my guess is that it's because the, the price of these these two companies is uh, you know above two thousand three thousand dollars um and that that is the reason i think why it's uh, they are not that popular um so that could change with this stock split and even though as i said the value of the company will will not increase but there would be more a bit more demand uh, from the retail uh, side of uh, investors and also here in, in you see that uh, barons uh, mentions that alphabet stock split could permit the tech giant to join the Dow, the Dow Industrials. The components of the portfolio um, are weighted based on the price of the stock and not on, on the market value of the company. So companies with uh, 2,000, 3,000 in price will have to, to, to have a very, very heavy weight in the, in the portfolio, probably 30, 40, 50% of the portfolio, and that would, would, would not make for a, for a good um, index. So now with Alphabet splitting, um, it may be, uh, depends on, on Dow Jones, of course, that they add that to the Dow Jones industrials. And um, if that's the case, there's going to be also more demand of that stock because those uh, companies that follow the, the Dow Jones in, in their ETFs um, uh, indexes, they will have to buy that the stock. So it's uh, it's it's not uh, anything related to the value but more to the demand of the stock and uh, that's something that um, investors like um, but uh, it if anything is going to be only a short term you know impact i guess so my view of the, of if a company is in the long term like 10 years or more so a split will not have any any impact in in my view but in any case this is something that i wanted to comment so if we go to the cash flow statement uh, again the cash flow was very strong and you can see here how it accelerated the operating cash flow the free cash flow accelerated as well even though the capital expenditures in, in, in increased uh, a little bit and uh, ruth porat said that in 2022 they expect meaningful increase in capital expenditures specifically in technical infrastructure um and uh, then they mentioned the share repurchases they've been repurchasing uh, quite a, a large number of shares 50 billion and uh, what i like about this is that they view the share repurchase program as valuable and also incrementally valuable they mentioned and this is uh, due to a question of one analyst that um, was asking whether the the company was doing the repurchases as a systematic way to return cash to shareholders or whether that was opportunistic and uh, you know buying when the, when the, when they saw value in the stock meaning meaning that the stock was <coughs> undervalued when they repurchased those uh, stocks and this is good to know that they think that they add value when they uh, repurchase shares <clears throat> and you, you see here the activity in share repurchases for the last 10 years they only started in 2015 to repurchase shares and the uh, 50.3 billion in in december i mean in the in the last uh, fiscal year which is much larger than than before and it's been increasing and in the last quarter the last three months you see here that uh, the total in class a and class c was 13 billion so if you note here the price that they paid in the last quarter for uh, both classes is roughly to eight to nine in that range 
and this is higher than the price that uh, the stock is trading today um, which means that if they saw value the company saw value at these prices well probably at the uh, lower prices in the 2600 range is uh, even more valuable you know uh, so this is just something to, to keep in mind so let's uh, go to the revenue projections and then let me show you here the actuals up to December 2021 and here I'm going to show you the projections I made <coughs> in my previous video in April 2021 by the way I'm going to leave a link to the previous video um, up here because uh, that in that video I show all the qualitative uh, portion let's say of, of the analysis that uh, still stands today uh, and uh, you, you can see there why I like uh, Google and Alphabet so much uh, especially because the quality of the business is uh, is so great that I think it's going to add value in the long term year after year so these projections I made I want to compare this these two columns so this one is this is the actuals that uh, we just uh, saw and this is what I was projecting in uh, back in April so you can see revenue my projection was 2000, 200 billion and uh, they came with 257 billion in terms of operating income I was expecting 50 billion and they came with 78 and the BDA 63 and they came with 91 so you see that the numbers are much larger so when I do my projections you'll see I'm, I'm going to base on a larger figure so even if I'm not going to assume larger growth it's going to have an impact on the on the EBITDA so here I can show you the the new projection for um, as of today and in these projections I haven't changed much in in terms of growth and in terms of uh, operating margins uh, and this is going to be the EBITDA that we're going to use for uh, valuation purposes and here we can compare that projection with the previous I did and you see here that the growth is uh, similar even I am tapering the growth uh, in revenue while before I, I kept it quite constant and even in increased a bit in terms of the margin I'm keeping the margin constant and a little bit higher at the end and before the margin was uh, growing from 23 all the way to 27 so here the, the margin is a bit better but you can see 310 billion December 2031 uh, 277 December 2030 and here we had 240 for December 2030 uh, so there's, a, there's an increase now let me show you in this table how I build the revenue projections so this is the overall revenue growth which is coming from my projections of each of these different segments and uh, here for comparison we have the past five year compounded annual growth rate and you see that for example search w grew at 20.9 and I am assuming much lower rates of growth for the next 10 years YouTube ads also and then taper into 10 starting in 30 but it grew at 37 so all you'll see are uh, all what I've done is I've, I've tried to be more conservative than the past five years of course and I, I'm tapering this going from 2022 to 2031 this revenue growth in advertising and also in Google Cloud I checked that with the industry to try to see uh, to be consistent with the growth of the of the of the industry and um, and with previous assumptions I've made for example in terms of uh, advertising I check my Facebook assumptions and also my Amazon assumptions uh, the, the portion of advertising and see how these assumptions I'm, I'm making for Google play with the whole industry and with the assumptions I made for those other companies and also in Google Cloud I check Amazon as well AWS this is what I do for example in the advertising global market And in terms of uh, cloud, okay. So then the free cash projections. 
this is the actuals uh, as of December 2021 and again I want to show you here this column and this column which is the projections I made in April 2021 and again operating cash flow my projection for 2021 was uh, 75 billion and they came with 91 billion capital expenditures they in, they spent a little less than what i was assuming and the free cash flow was uh, 50 billion my assumption and they came with 67 so again everything much larger than what i was expecting so when i make my projections now they are going to come from a larger base and uh, of course even though I'm not going to change the growth and the capital expenditures to revenue that much the the number is going to be larger you know so we can see 233 billion in free cash flow for uh, December 2031 and this is a large number you know this is almost the value of Netflix or uh, Disney or uh, those companies uh, in free cash flow in one year I don't know it, it's a bit scary but uh, this is what you know uh, reasonable projections are, are saying you know so it, it, it could be possible because if you go 10 years back in the past the the value of, uh, of uh, Google was a uh, hundred and something billion and uh, now we're talking about uh, 10 more, more than 10 times that so things things grow quite quite dramatically i think it it's uh, the growth is going to taper as as you see in the projections i'm, I'm making but um, still you know scary numbers if we check the projections uh, compared to the previous projections and you see i didn't make any changes here in growth even i i brought it a little bit lower and uh, in capital expenditures to revenue, I kept it the same. So the 200 billion that I was assume that I am assuming now for uh, 2022, uh, before it was 170. So this is 30 billion increase from uh, the fact that now we are basing uh, our projections in a, from a larger larger numbers. Just uh, as a check. The numbers that of free cash flow that in by tw for 2027 that uh, Credit Suisse is assuming is almost 200 billion, and if you see my projections in 2027 is 130 billion. So again, much more conservative from my point of view. But so I I, I show you this just to check that the numbers. In some instances, some analysts are even assuming larger numbers for uh, for free cash flow. Um, I'm not saying that this is right, this is wrong. The good thing is that if you if you are assuming more conservative numbers and uh, when you compute the fair value, you reach to a number that is higher than the price that uh, the, that you can buy the stock today. That gives you even more comfort that it. It's a potential good invest investment, you know, with a larger margin of safety. So this is all. It's um, I think that uh, value in a company is not a matter of being precise, but just a matter of being uh, in the ballpark. And if when you're in the ballpark, you still have a margin of safety, then then it's a good thing. So let's go to the valuation. And um, Normally what I do here, as uh, you may know, is I take the EBITDA in for December 2031 and the free cash flow that I am projecting. I use these ratios and here the ratios uh, I'm using now, I am being mo even more conservative than, than what I used in the previous video. Um, so then I compute the enterprise value with these ratios. I subtract the debt in this case, which is a negative debt or more cash than debt to calculate the market value. And you see here, 5 trillion company in 2031. Uh, you know, could be possible, who knows, it's 1.7 trillion now. So it could be possible. And so this is the price that I get with, all the, uh, with each of these uh, metrics and uh, this is going to be the average. And with this average price, what I do is the cash flow for the investor. So purchasing the stock 
at uh, this price, which is uh, as of 17 of February, to, to 2,600. This free cash flow adjusted per share that we're going, I mean, that the company is going to receive during this period. And then this price, the one I just computed, being the, the, the price I, I'm going to sell it here. And uh, it gives me this IRR for uh, this price, 2651, 15.13%, which is a very nice IRR. And then I do a sensitivity. If I decrease the price or I increase the price, uh, purchase price, of course, uh, the IRR will change. And um, I tend to target around 10% as my goal. So this gives me this number, 38, roughly the, the um, fair value of the company. So if we compute the price to fair value, as of today, is 0.69. That gives me 31% uh, of uh, um, margin of safety. So if we compare that with uh, the previous one uh, in April, the assumption was uh, 2.8, approximately was the fair value. And um, the price to fair value then was 0.8. So 20% margin of safety. So the margin of safety today, even though I'm buying the stock at a higher price uh, than before, the margin of safety is, is better. So the, the trade-off, let's say, between risk and reward is better today than in April 2021 from my calculations at least. So that's it. Um, that's uh, my, my new analysis of uh, Alphabet. A company that I, I really like. Um, in this channel, as you can see, um, at, up, up to this point at least, I am showing mostly companies that are really, really high quality companies from my perspective. Um, I probably in the future I, I will upload some videos of companies that are not that great in quality, but I tend not to, you know, put too much effort in analyzing companies that I see they don't have the, the attributes that I'm looking for. So that's why I'm concentrating more on companies that I think are quite, uh, you know, uh, quality companies. And uh, that's uh, the, the good thing about that is that when you invest in a quality company that creates value over time, the price that you purchase the, the stock at is important, but not at, as important. As long as you're not overpaying, uh, even if you're paying a fair price, you are going to benefit from the increase in fair value of the company. If you buy it at a, at a discount, it's even better, of course. Um, I have a video that I'm going to uh, put a link there uh, talking about that. So Alphabet, so Alphabet um, is one of those companies and um, it's a company that we as per my calculations today, can be purchased at uh, a, a good discount. You know, 31% of margin of safety is, is a really uh, good discount, I think. So um, there you have it. Um, I hope that you like the video. You, I hope that you find it uh, interesting in some ways. If you do, please give it uh, a like. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. And um, well, Thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon for another evaluation video, probably in a couple of uh, weeks time. Thanks very much. Bye bye.